Well, one of the most difficult and hidden emotional pains to identify and treat is that of child sexual abuse. Our next guest can offer help and hope for those suffering from that horrific experience, mm -hmm. both from a professional and personal experience. Christy Lemley is a licensed clinical social worker and has written the book Broken and Transformed, Moving Beyond Life's Difficult Times. Welcome to Real Life, Christy. Yes. Thank you. So Thank you for having here. me. It's so <laughs> nice to have you. Thank you for this, this wonderful book that you've written that mm -hmm. just ministers to the heart. Mm -hmm. And now you just have an incredible story to share with us and um, just the, the ministry that has come out of, of your past and your brokenness. Absolutely. Would you share your story? Yes. What happened to me when I was younger, um, I was sexually abused. It happened five or six times, and through that, I kind of, as a child, I was young, five or six, and some of you know what that is like, and I tried to just hide it. Mm -hmm. And I put on this mask, right. and I tried to go through life acting like there was nothing wrong. If I could be perfect mm -hmm. on the outside, yeah. then no one would know what was going on right. on the inside. Mm -hmm. And so um, the ministry, the talk, through, talk to us about how that transitioned into just knowing that there needed to be a change and when you started to, to take that mask off. Well, it wasn't until I was in college, actually, taking my psychology classes that I remembered what had happened. Mm. I had stuffed it down so deep and acted like nothing was wrong. Oh, okay. Although when I was going through my high school years, I was very angry. Okay. Mm -hmm. And looking back from where I sit now, it was mm. like, wow, how I responded was in anger. Wow. And when I was in college, going through my classes, it all came back to me. Right. And I was able to forgive the person who had harmed me. Okay. And I felt like I was able to move on. Mm. And so I actually started counseling. I was a therapist. I specialize in individuals who have been sexually abused and things okay. like that. Mm -hmm. and. In 2002, it was just like I was counseling somebody who had gone through um, sexual abuse. And okay. I would go home in the evening after counseling, and I would find myself feeling just angry, kind of. I would self-sabotage. I would yeah. feel like in my mind, well, I don't deserve this. I'm not mm -hmm. good enough for this. Okay. And I just was like, Lord, what is going on within me? Mm -hmm. And I just started praying, and I realized that I hadn't forgiven myself. Yeah for how I reacted because of my pain. Okay. And this is one of the things a lot of people who have been abused suffer with. Mm -hmm. They respond, whether it's through drinking or drugs right. or getting involved in lots of relationships, mm -hmm. things like that. And, they, and that's how they deal with what's happened to right. them. Okay. And that's what happened with me. And I just gave it to God. Mm -hmm. And it took eight months of me praying and, and wow. calling out to God, saying, Lord, help me to use that same, or to apply Jesus' blood to my own life. Right. right. So mm -hmm. I could just be released from shame and guilt. Mm -hmm. And praise God, he did. Yeah. Amen. Wow. I think you have such a powerful testimony. I think so many people can relate. You know, working in the church, I've been in a church all my life, but I've seen so many people who love God, but have came through these similar circumstances. Mm -hmm. You're like you're not alone and so I was so mm -hmm. excited for today for you to come because I know that you know we'll have viewers out there who they've walked through this and whether what stage they're at but something in your book that you had said I thought was very profound and for everyone to realize you said I believe God allows circumstances to happen a lot of times it is because of the free will of other people God will not control people or make them do what he wants them to do Sometimes we are broken by our own behaviors, but I think, like you said, you, we can't turn on God. Right. You know, because He right. didn't do this. This was not His plan. And so I love, you know, then for your ministry that you also, you had said your calling in your ministry is about getting beyond myself. And I mean, that's huge. It is, mm -hmm. because of the things I have been in, through in my life, mm -hmm. I have to lay down my shame, my guilt, mm -hmm. and even just putting myself out there mm -hmm. and what I've been through and people are like, how can you do that? Isn't that difficult? Right. And it's getting beyond myself that mm -hmm. if there's something that I can say that will help somebody be freed 
from pain or bondage in their life, mm -hmm. then, then that's what God's plan is right. for my life. That's and right. I am willing to put myself out there mm -hmm. so that others can really have the hope and freedom that there's mm -hmm. a better tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's right. Absolutely. Amen. Now, the beginning part of the title of your book is Broken. Mm -hmm. And you said in your book that you really believe that everybody will find themselves broken at one point or another in their lifetime. Can you talk to us about what does it mean to be broken and what does it look like? What does it feel like? So how does a person know and be able to say like, yes, I am in a place of brokenness? Well, first of all, I think being broken when, you, when you're there, when you're truly broken, you know it. Okay. You may not know how to identify it. You may not know, really know exactly what's going on, but it really is your whole life has kind of stopped in a moment for whatever has happened, whether you've been abused and, and you're just really now broken and it's difficult to go through. Mm -hmm. Your relationships are a mess. Yes, right. You know, it's hard to have healthy relationships with people when mm -hmm. you are broken. It's the situation really has caused you to question lots of things in your life. Okay. And that's how you know. Brokenness looks different for different people. It doesn't okay. look the same for everybody. And I think that's one of the difficult things right. is that it doesn't look the same. Mm -hmm. And so what your brokenness may look like is not right. going to be what mine looks like. Right. And so that's why people don't necessarily identify, wow, I think maybe I am broken. Right, mm -hmm. right. Now we want to talk about how brokenness does affect our relationships. Mm -hmm. So how do you counsel people to start putting, putting those pieces back together so that they can have those vibrant relationships again? Well, I think the first thing is people need to realize that they're probably wearing a mask. Okay. If it's been years, like with my sexual abuse, mm -hmm. I put on that mask mm -hmm. and I had to realize I was wearing a mask first. Okay. So many people don't realize it. They think, you know, they go to church, I'm a good Christian. And I think yeah. sometimes it's even more difficult for Christians to acknowledge mm -hmm. that maybe I'm broken. Because right. if I'm broken, then that must mean maybe my faith isn't big enough or mm -hmm. whatever. Sure. And so first, what I would say is people need to realize that they might be wearing a mask. Okay. And then I would also say that they need to be open. They need to allow God to go to that difficult place mm -hmm. in their heart okay. to heal. And with relationships, what I say to people is the other person is suffering. Hurting people hurt people. That's right. right. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. And so in relationships, if I'm hurting, it's going to be really difficult for me to have a really healthy relationship with you right, right. and to really love you the way that God wants me to love you right. and to have good boundaries in my life mm -hmm. when, when I'm hurting. And so it really does impact relationships. Mm -hmm. And so how long does the process take to rebuild your life? <laughs> That's a really good question. Uh -huh. It depends. Okay. Part of it depends on if people really give everything to God. Okay. They have to be open with God and allow Him to come into those difficult places mm -hmm. or it's going to take a longer time. Right. One of the things I say that can determine um, how long it takes is if we run to God or away from God. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know when I was broken by the church plant failing, mm -hmm. at first I kind of ran from God. I quit doing my daily devotions. I quit doing... Um, my prayer and fasting, and right. I just took a step back. I'm right. so thankful that quickly I went back to God. You right. know, it was just a matter of days. Mm -hmm. But are we going to run to God or away from God? Are mm -hmm. we going to blame God, mm -hmm. or are we going to realize that people have free will, mm -hmm. and we can't blame God for things that other people do? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that we have just a little bit of time left. Would you mind looking into the camera and just minister to those who are watching today and are struggling Absolutely. with brokenness? I just want to say to you today, if you're struggling with being broken, whether it's sexual abuse, whether it's abuse from a spouse, maybe a divorce, whatever, I want to say to you today that God has a plan for your life. Give everything to God and He will make you new. One of the things that I found in my own brokenness was that when I gave it all to God, He transformed me and He gave me His love and just his guidance. And so I just want to say to you today that allow God to speak truth to you because it's the truth that sets you free. 
Amen. Thank you so much. Um, so we want you to know that if you would like us to pray with you, please know once again that our prayer partners are here. You can call. The number is right there on your screen. And somebody will pick up the phone and they'll be able to spend some time listening and praying for you. And Christy, we did want to mention too that you have a ministry. Can you share your the name of your ministry? Okay. It's Living in the Light Ministries. Mm -hmm. I'm an individual counselor. I also counsel families, but I also travel and speak. Wonderful. And Amen. have authored the book. We're going to put all of your information on our website so that you can connect to her ministry. So, Christy, thank you so much yes. for being here blessing. and for thank sharing you for your having story. Me. Thank it you. It was wonderful. All right, we'll be right back.